I would like to invite now again, but now for the keynote session, uh, Daniel Gancho. Uh, you saw him as the first speaker to uh, welcome uh, you. Daniel, we are very pleased to hear your talk. Yeah, so thank you all uh, for this uh, invitation. I'm very happy to be here in Zurich. Uh, I'm very happy to actually see Switzerland having a conference on 9-11. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, Piers Robinson uh, was just talking about insider trading. Some of you might have read the papers that uh, on 9-11, Insiders made 30 million dollars, so it was you know it was a day uh, where you could make a lot of money if you knew that the, the the stock market of United Airlines and American Airlines would crash. And if you know that that stock market crashes, you can buy a put option and uh, and actually make money with it, with the stock market crash. And the paper that's why I want to hint it was published by Mark Mark Chesney. He's a professor here at the. Zurich University, so it's good to be here in Zurich. Mark is not here today, but he's certainly one of the academics uh, who has looked into the whole thing. Uh, my talk is on, on World Trade Center 7. I know that you know that World Trade Center 7 is the third building that collapsed on that day, but I think it's maybe the clearest cut case that we need to go um, towards 9-11 truth, that, that we need to say the official story is a lie. And when I, when I worked on my PhD on Operation Gladio, I found out that when you look at international wars or terrorist attacks, you can be carried in 1,000 directions. And that makes you all confused. And in the end, you don't know what to do. And the simplest thing, then, is to go back to one thing and stay there, and stay there, and stay there. So that's what I do. I stay with World Trade Center 7. I just go with you through the facts. Um, just a few days ago, we're now 18 years after the terrorist attacks of 9-11, and just a few days ago, the 9-11 Truth Movement has really made a tremendous step forward with the Halsey Report published. And Halsey said, fire did not cause the collapse of World Trade Center 7 on 9-11, contrary to the conclusion of NIST and private engineering firms that studied the collapse, and published on September 3, 2019, so it's really just a week ago. And I read the entire report, it's 120 pages long, and as I've been following the World Trade Center 7 debate for a long time, I've always said it's either fire or controlled demolition. And now with the Halsey report, I decided this report is convincing World Trade, Se World Trade Center 7 was destroyed by controlled demolition. That's why I call my talk World Trade Center 7 was destroyed by controlled demolition. Um, obviously, everybody out there in the media, in academia, in the public, um, is, is, is very welcome to come forward with other arguments that prove that it wasn't controlled uh, 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 by controlled demolition. I put now this, uh, this argument forward in German, uh, Die Sprengung, I published this on Rubicon, and what I actually do, and I th I'm a historian, it's just very interesting. In fact, it's even funny, you know. Um, you publish something and you write at the lower lev level of your text that every media is free to co just copy, paste and take it, okay? And then you can see which media outlets publish it. And that gives you a very good overview who is actually a gatekeeper and who is actually working for 9-11 Truth. It's actually a trick, okay? It's like you send out the dog and see where he runs. And it's funny, it's funny to watch him run. Um, uh, the basic facts, I'm just you know, wrapping up some facts for people who have to go, who go like, what, is there, is there a third building who fell? I I'm talking to, to people who have no clue at all. Now you, you're all very familiar with the building. But just the very, very important and basic fact to remember, if you maybe meet somebody, a friend, a brother, who has never heard of World Trade Center 7, don't forget to tell him that the building was in free fall for two seconds. That's the most important point, point number one. So we know um, we have the Twin Towers here, we have Wall Trade Center 7 here. Uh, another picture, aerial view of uh, Manhattan, New York, here again, the Twin Towers, Wall Trade Center number one, uh, well known because it has this antenna, as Ansgar Schneider said, you know, that's how you can remember which one is the one, which is the two. The one has like a one on the top, so it's, you know, easy to remember. And World Trade Center 7 is in the back, and uh, it would be 
the tallest building in Switzerland. So if we're speaking here in Switzerland, it's completely different than if we were speaking in New York. Because in New York, everybody goes like, well, Trade Center 7 wasn't that tall. Whereas in Switzerland, everybody goes like, gee, that's a big building, okay? That's, 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 that's why World Trade Center matters to me a lot. And the collapse of World Trade Center 7 at 5.20 p.m. Um, is remarkable because um, the building dropped in absolute free fall for the first 2.25 seconds. And I tell you, I'm a historian, and on 9-11 many things happen, and it's really making your mind blow the many things that happen. But you can ignore everything. Ignore everything. Just take these 2.25 seconds and stick to that, okay? You can actually say the building dropped in seven seconds. That's okay, you can even, if you have a long attention span, you can take in the seven seconds. But if you really wanna focus on something on 9-11, focus on these two seconds. How can a building go into free fall for two seconds? And now everybody goes, oh gee, I'm not a, I'm not a structural engineer, I'm not an architect, I happen to be a mother, or I happen to be a gardener, or I happen to be a, a computer scientist, or I happen to be an entrepreneur doesn't matter. doesn't matter. Whoever you are, even if you're 15 years old or 82, if you see a building that moves into two seconds free fall, you will know that there is zero resistance. Okay? That is free fall. Do we have something that I can drop? Maybe this bottle. <laughs> Not the glass. <laughs> yes. Free fall. Let's just see it. Now, if I, if I drop this bottle, everybody knows that it's not going upward, right? That's free fall, it just goes down. And that is the thing that we must look at if we see the World Trade Center 7 going down. It did go down, there's a 100% consensus on that. Nobody's saying, no, it didn't go down. Yes, it did go down. Before it was like that, and it afterwards it was like that. And I'm now I'm not a structural engineer, but I can see that is a whole lot of a difference, okay? <laughs> Somebody asking you, do you want to move in here? You go like, yeah, how much is the rent? Somebody asking you, do you want to move in here? You go like, no way. So what's the difference? That's a seven seconds difference, a huge difference. And if you look at the pile of rubble, you go like, okay, it was 47 story skyscraper before, and afterwards it was just four stories. That's a huge compression, and it collapsed into its own footprint. An incredible story. I mean, I've looked at so many stories as a, as a historian. I've, for instance, researched how did the Vietnam War start? Okay, three million people killed. The Vietnam War started with a lie, the Gulf of Tonkin lie. Johnson's went on television and he said we were attacked. Now we know there was no such attack. I don't think the, the Vietnam War started with a, with a huge story. I think 9-11 is a bigger story. It's probably the biggest story that you ever, ever meet in your lifetime. And if you don't wake up on that story, you can, sleep on forever, basically, that's what I think. I mean, uh, yeah. There is, there is total proof and there is total consensus that we have 81 steel columns in World Trade Center 7. And that's the only two figures that you have to memorize. I was teaching students here at Zurich University in 2004. They had to read the 9-11 Commission report. I was working as a historian at the history department. And now, you know, students always go like, what is important in this whole book? And then you say, just remember two things, okay? And then you find out the most important figures because otherwise they get confused. And if you want to know two figures for World Trade Center 7, remember the two seconds, free fall, and remember the 81 columns Keep these two figures in the head. 81 columns, this is column 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So, you know, they're, they jump the numbers a little bit, but these are the columns outside, and these are the interior columns, and it ends here, 81. And there is no dispute, okay? Nobody's coming and saying, no, gee, there were just two columns. No. It's 81 columns, everybody agrees, that's the fact. And it's two seconds free fall. There are even pictures, if somebody doesn't know how these columns look like. This is when World Trade Center 7 was uh, uh, constructed. They took pictures, so you can look at how, these are solid, solid steel beams. Construction began in 83. Uh, it was over in 87, then people moved in. In 2001, it collapsed. So the building died as a teenager, okay? It's only 18 years old, that building. And as a historian, I take the building as a human being. I go like, okay, what's the name of that teenager? 
World Trade Center 7. When was it born? 83. When did it die? 2001. Why was it only 18 years? Did it die from fire? No. It was blown up. Gee, tough life. The steel was removed. Get that? The steel was removed. Shouldn't happen. The steel should be there for every scientist to check what happened. So that's the first point. Two seconds free fall, if you can memorize that. And if you can memorize the 81 steel commons, then you're fine, you know? Then you've mastered our master class, right? It's a very complex course. Uh, but you should, uh, if you know the two seconds and the 81 columns, you're fine. In fact, I'm going to repeat the two seconds and the 81 columns a few times because memory technique have shown that the key fact should be repeated 10 times. Two seconds, 81 columns. Did you know a third tower fell? That's, that's part of the debate we're in, okay? Some of your friends, some people here in Zurich, some people in Holland, uh, George is here. Good to see you, George. I mean, George van Hatz is making excellent, excellent talks in Amsterdam. I was recently in Amsterdam. Excellent, you know. He's waking people up to, to the fact that there are three towers that collapsed in that day. No, but I'm saying, you know, we are in many countries. We're now in Switzerland, but this thing is going on in the Netherlands. This is going on in the US. Uh, Niels Harrod is from Denmark. So this is a global thing. This is a global thing. And we should take uh, courage from that. So people in the US walked around and said, did you know a third tower fell? And many people in the US didn't know. I don't know how their feeling was, okay, when they read that. But that is one of the first steps for the 9-11 truth movement that people need to understand how many buildings, high-rise buildings, collapsed on that day. Because you think it's two, you're just not well informed. That's the basic step. As if you think that Paris is in Italy, you're not well informed, okay? So the basic first step is that you have to say it's three buildings. And then, obviously, we've been talking about the media for a long time. Then you have to keep in mind that people know about 9-11 because they watch television. It's not because they read the NIST reports, okay? It's because they watch television. And television stations usually have just reported on the collapse of the Twin Towers, except the BBC. Okay, the BBC reported about the World Trade Center 7 collapse, but 20 minutes too early. And that's not good, okay? I mean, most people, when they watch television, they're drunk, right? They have a beer and everything. But you should realize that if a television station is reporting an event before it occurs, okay, then something is not good, okay? So this is Jane Stanley. At the five o'clock news on BBC, telling that the Solomon Brothers building, which is the World Trade Center 7, collapsed. But the building is standing behind her. Now, more on the latest building collapse in New York. You might have heard a few moments ago, I was talking about the Salomon Brothers building collapsing. We'll probably find out more now about that from our correspondent, Jane Stanley. Jane, what more can you tell us about the Salomon Brothers building and its collapse? Well, only really what you already know, but uh, New York very much a city still in chaos. The phones are not working. That's fake news. It's fake news. Somebody told me, Dan, you're really picky. It's just 20 minutes fake news, right? <laughs> Crap. Other, f <laughs> other, other, fake news, other fake news linger on for much longer. Uh, and, and in fact, yeah, after 20 minutes, she was right. But the problem is she said it too early. And then in 2008, she said, yes, it was a mistake. And then people started to attack Jane Stanley. Now, don't do that, OK? She, she's just a journalist, OK? Uh, she, she didn't blow it up. She was just there reporting, and she was reading out of the teleprompter. So she's not to blame. She actually had a nervous breakdown and had you know, to, to, to have a break from her job. She couldn't continue working, because people were really sending her emails and everything with that she was somehow linked to Dick Cheney and stuff. And, and, and Richard Porter, he's the head of BBC World News, so the boss of Jane, he said, on September 11, 2000, Reuters incorrectly reported that one of the buildings of the New York World Trade Center, World Trade Center 7, had collapsed before it actually did. So that came out in 2008. The problem is, at that time, 
most people were not paying attention anymore. They were going like, what was that? That's a long time ago. And that's, that's a problem. You need to focus. If you focus, you go like, okay, BBC acknowledges that they reported 20 minutes too early. That's not disputed. This is a fact. Okay. BBC reported too early. These are the first three points I wanted to, ma to, um, to make clear. The fourth point is that the New York Times called it a mystery. Quote, until now, the collapse of World Trade Center 7 has stood as one of the outstanding mysteries of the September 11 attack since before then, no modern steel reinforced high rise in the United States had ever collapsed in a fire. That's 2002, James Glantz, who is a journalist for the New York Times. So it is a first, okay? It has never happened in history, never, never, ever. Now you go say, okay, in the Middle East, uh, in the Middle Ages, you didn't have many steel frame high rises, okay? You didn't have any, in fact, in the Middle Ages. But uh, after some time, let's say in the 20th century, they come and you have a few of them. And it never happens. On 9-11, it happens three times. Before never, and then three times. That should make you say, think. I'm saying the New York Times, I mean, they are the local newspaper. They should have investigated this. And they failed miserably. Totally, utterly miserably. So what they said, it's an outstanding mi mystery, and then they, they leave it at that. I'm not sure, but that's good enough. And then you have a FEMA report in 2002. I'm taking you a little bit through the history. And the FEMA report, uh, which is a government agency, said the specifics of the fires in World Trade Center 7 and how they caused the building to collapse remain unknown. So you have all these unknown mysteries. It feels like if you're talking about dragons in, in, in fantasy land, okay? It's a building in New York. It's not fairy tales. Why is it mystery? Why is it unknown? Further research, investigation, and analysis are needed to resolve this issue. This is the FEMA report, 2002. You can read it out here. It's too small for you, you know, but the FEMA report, the interesting thing in this report is that it highlights the tenants of the building. So who's in the building? It's the CIA, it's the Pentagon, it's the Office of Emergency Management. So this is not just a normal building where your average citizen lives and has a cat and a dog, okay? This is a very special building. And just to give you the sequence of the collapse, we first have uh, the Twin Towers that collapse and are first hit, and then we have Building 7 that collapses. So at 846, the North Tower, you know which one the North Tower is? Did I say that already? On the North Tower, you have a one, okay? That's World Trade Center one. Easy to remember. World Trade Center number one is the first one uh, to be hit, 846. 903, South Tower hit. 959, South Tower collapse. 1028, North Tower collapse. And then for the average TV person, the show is over. But then there's a second show coming on at 7020. And for those who are clever, for those who are awake, they know that the show wasn't over. At 7020, World Trade Center 7 collapses. And the argument is that the collapse of the North Tower put stuff on the World Trade Center 7, and then the World Trade Center 7 caught fire and it collapsed. Okay? So because the Twin Towers were hit by planes, World Trade Center 7 was never hit by a plane. And the story is the Twin Towers collapsed because of the planes. Then I have to ask myself, how about World Trade Center 7? It wasn't hit by a plane. Did it go down out of sympathy? <laughs> like, gee, we've stood together for so long, now they're down, I'll go down. <laughs> These are so obvious questions, very obvious questions. If two towers are hit by planes, and people tell you the reason why they collapsed are the, are the planes. Then you always have to say, why did the third tower go down? It wasn't hit by a plane. Then people can go, to, hush, hush, shut up. Where did you read that? This is secret. But it's not secret anymore. It's in plain view. So if we then look at the, at the picture and we say, okay, okay, maybe some stuff when World Trade Center 1, did I say World Trade Center 1 is the one with the 1 on the top? When it collapsed, maybe some stuff fell on the World Trade Center 7. Maybe that's true. Let's look at the picture. I see, okay, it collapsed. It collapsed, that's for sure. And yeah, a little stuff probably fell on it, but not much. See the distance? 
But that's not a good angle. We have to watch from here. Do you see this building? We have to watch from here. Let's do that. This is this building. We watch from here. World Trade Center 1 is down. There's not much stuff on the World Trade Center. It's not really totally damaged or destroyed or full of fire and flames. No, it's a little stuff. Here, World Trade Center 2 is already down, so that's the second collapse. And as I, as I told you, uh, the North Tower collapses at 10.20. So there's, there's more than six hours later. Okay, gee, what happened? There were fires, yes, but they were small, they were scattered. As Richie Gage, who has spoken before me, has correctly said, there were fires, we agree. But you can't say that a fire in a steel frame building will lead to its total collapse. This has never happened before. Why should it happen on 9-11? Okay, next point. Outstanding mystery. It should have been investigated by the Keene and Hamilton Commission. Do you know when something happens in a country like the US, or when something happens in Switzerland, like big stories, then the parliament usually sets up a group of parliamentarians and then they investigate it. Okay? For instance, Iran Contra affair in 1986. Um, or when they found out that the CIA was actually trying to kill Fidel Castro. They set up the church committee. So that's what usually happens. Now, in this case, you didn't have parliamentarians investigating the whole story. You had people selected by the president. Okay? The president said, gee, who could investigate this? You could, you could, you could. Okay? So he chose Keane and Hamilton to head an investigation. This investigation published a report in the year 2004, 600 pages thick. Okay, so this is the Keene Hamilton report, and President Bush said, thank you very much, because the story basically said, what the president told you is the truth. That was it. He said, it was Al-Qaeda, it was Osama bin Laden, whole thing. As I said, here in Zurich, where we're speaking here today, in 2004, or 2005 maybe it was, I was giving a class to history students. So I gave them the book. I said, how does that book explain the collapse of World Trade Center 7? A 600 pages book, so the students were a bit upset. They're like, oh, Jesus, do you have a PDF? Um, and if you look at it, and today you can find it on the internet, you put in 9-11 Commission Report, and you'll find a PDF of the whole thing. That's much faster, right? And you put in World Trade Center 7, and you run through the data. It takes you 10 minutes, right? 10 minutes of your precious time. You will find that the building is being mentioned, but not that it collapsed. Isn't that crazy? They put three years to write the report. The report is 600 pages thick, and I don't get the number of buildings right that collapsed. And this is really sad. I mean, <laughs> this is not like, you couldn't say, yeah, two or three buildings, let's not be picky, you know? This is, this is the basic, basic work that somebody needs to do, and it's three buildings, and David Ray Griffin, has correctly said the commission avoids another embarrassing problem explaining how World Trade Center 7 could have collapsed, also at virtually free fall speed, by simply not mentioning the collapse of this building. This is incredible. This is just incredible. So it suffices for us to take account of this fact and say, okay, so the official story misses one building. And then zoom in on that building and remember 81 columns and two seconds free fall, then you're fine. Did you remember that? 81 columns, two seconds free fall. At the point when you get some more, oh, I know 81 columns, two seconds free fall. At that point, it really sinks in, okay? That's it. And it was used by the president to declare war on Afghanistan, okay? 7 October 2001, US attacks Afghanistan. It was used to invade Iraq, March 2003, and the press said Saddam Hussein had something to do with 9-11. Bollocks, that's just total nonsense. Saddam Hussein had nothing to do with 9-11, but the population was so scared in the US, or angry, or confused, and probably all three, scared, angry, and confused, that they were more or less paralyzed. They made a research among US soldiers in Iraq, asking them, why are you here? Okay, one million people killed in Iraq. So they ask the soldiers, US soldiers in Iraq, why are you here? The answer is, 
85% of US soldiers said they were in Iraq to retaliate for Saddam's role in the 9-11 attacks. That shows you what propaganda can do to your brain. It can send you in another country that you don't even know to kill other people that you've never met, that have never hurt you, based on a lie that you've not understood. So never underestimate, yeah. <laughs> so the effects of 9-11 are far-reaching, okay? As Pierce said before, Pierce Robinson, in the talk just before, during the war against Syria, which started in 2011, the British and the American secret services supported everybody who was against Assad. The CIA in Operation Timber Sycamore armed radical Muslims in Syria to overthrow Assad. And this is being sold to us as a fight against Al-Qaeda. Do you see the contradiction? It's like if you're from the fire department and you, you light up the house. It's just not fair and it's not honest. So the Keen report really, really messes up. So the Keen report is worth nothing. It's worth nothing. That's a zero value document, except a document interesting for historians to show how, how misled we all are. Then there was a Zogby ana uh, analytics uh, question in May 2006, so just after the Keen report was published, they called people. Now, you probably get these calls sometimes, and I think they're really disturbing. You're at home, people calling you, I don't like these calls. But in this case, I think it's interesting. <laughs> um, they asked 1,200 US adults uh, 81 questions, and they also asked about World Trade Center 7. Um, they asked, are you aware? And 43% answered, I'm not aware of World Trade Center Building 7 collapsed. So half the population didn't know. And that's in Switzerland about the same. I not, don't know where you're from, but expect that the people you talk to, they don't know about World Trade Center 7, first thing. Um, then they asked, do you think it's good that the commission didn't investigate World Trade Center 7? They say, I'm aware of it, and I think the commission should have investigated it. That's 38%. Others said, I'm aware of it and think the commission was right to investigate just the Twin Towers. That just shows you, you know, people are really confused. And uh, neither nor sure. So the Zogby poll shows that half of the population in the US doesn't know the number of buildings that collapsed, but they cheer for wars killing one million people. Isn't that crazy? I just want to underline the strength of propaganda. Don't underestimate propaganda. It's really, really, really strong. And my next point is um, that uh, we had a debate here in Switzerland. And I just want to show you the highest building in Switzerland. It is in Basel. It's not in Zurich. It's in Basel. It's called the Roche Tower. It's 178 meters high. And if, you, if, you, if you're on the River Rhine, uh, if you walk there, you can see it. So it's now the highest building in Switzerland. Obviously, for the US, that's nothing. Uh, but for Switzerland, it's a huge, huge building. In fact, in Basel, where I live, we have a huge debate whether we should have so, uh, such high buildings or not, uh, whether it's destroying the beauty of Switzerland or whether it's actually adding international glamour to Switzerland. But that debate is not important. I'm interested to compare this with the World Trade Center 7, and it's 186 meters high. So I'm telling you, this is the highest building in Switzerland, a part that is not in Switzerland. And in 2006, I, contact, I was working at the ETH here, also in Zurich, just across the corner, Center for Security Studies. And then I went to talk to our top experts in Switzerland, engineers, structural engineers. And I talked to Jörg Schneider, who's here today. And I remember our talk. And I'm very, very profoundly influenced by this talk because I asked him and I asked his colleague, Hugo Bachmann, how do you think could World Trade Center 7 come down? And they asked me first, because they're very good scientists, was it not hit by a plane? I said, no, it was not hit by a plane. Was it maybe hit by a rock? And I said, no. And then we just looked at it on the video. We didn't have all the details. And I said, just looking at the video, how it comes down, it was probably, you know, they couldn't be sure, but they say probably, with a high probability, it was destroyed by controlled demolition. We, I published this in 2006 in the Swiss newspaper, Tagus on Cycle. According to my opinion, building World Trade Center 7 was with high probability destroyed by controlled demolition. So I, I want to, to 
thank Jörg Schneider, who's here today, maybe we give him an applause for... <laughs> for speaking truth to power. Because when I published this, I got into a huge storm, you know, people were shouting all th sort of things at me. But that, that's another thing that I tell you, if you are in the 9-11 debate, don't wait for everybody to agree with you. Just research and make um, your communication. You can't wait until everybody agrees. Also, Hugo Bachmann, because as a, as a historian, I always need two sources, okay? One source is not enough. And he's also a very respected expert in Switzerland. He said in 2006, controlled demolition with very high probability. So that's 13 years ago. And uh, I published this uh, uh, in, in, in the Tagesanzeiger, Der erbitterte Streit um den 11. September, which basically means there's a, there's a huge debate going on on 9-11. And it's not only in Switzerland, it's also in Holland, where Dan Juvenko said, World Trade Center 7, that's controlled demolition. And he said it before he knew that the video that he was watching was a picture of 9-11, okay? He just looked at the picture without knowing where it is, and he said, controlled demolition. And then those who had shown him the video said, gee, that was on 9-11. He's like, no way. And they're, yeah. And he's like, gee. This is, this is controlled demolition. Zeker weten. Zeker weten. Dat is nagesprongen. Dit is een opdracht gebeurd. Dit heeft een team gedaan van experts. And it's also in Japan. Okay, that's, that's something I really want to make you uh, aware of. The 9-11 truth movement is not limited to the US. We have to say the best work is being done in the US. But other countries are taking on the data, and in Germany, in France, in Italy, you know, in some countries it's more difficult than in others, but here in Switzerland the debate goes on. But it is basically a global movement of people who say, we want to know the truth. We want to know the truth, whatever it is. And here this is a, a Japanese parliamentarian. His name is Yukihisha Fushita. Okay, I don't know him. Uh, but in 2008, he, he showed this in Parliament in Japan, and you can find it on the internet. Uh, and he just says, this is very strange. So it's really a debate that you have in Switzerland, in Japan, in Holland, and in other countries. And obviously in the US, the debate was long dominated by the NIST. The NIST is the National Institute for Standards and Technology, and the NIST has taken a very, very long time to research World Trade Center 7. And in 2008, they came out and said it was fire. Now, keep in mind, when they came out in 2008, that was the last year in office of President Bush, okay? Had they come out with, this is controlled demolition, Bush would have been in very serious trouble. Because once you're out of the White House, I'm not sure whether that's true, but probably then you, you can be touched. When you're in the White House, you can't be touched anyway. Um, uh, and you have to see that the NIST is part of the United States Department of Commerce. So that's one part of the government. So the NIST, everybody in the NIST, are employees of George Bush, okay? You have to understand this, otherwise you can't understand the study. And the NIST uh, um, person who produced the story, Dr. Shyam Saunders, said on 21st of August 2008, it was fire. Okay, they produced a report and there said, this report describes how the fires that followed the impact of debris from the collapse of World Trade Center 1, the North Tower, the one with the needle, led to the collapse of World Trade Center 7. So that was their story. And they, they said the buckling of column 79 between floors 5 and 14 was the initial event that led to the global collapse of World Trade Center 7. Um, this story is very, very strange, okay? Everybody can check the story and then make up his mind. Is it controlled demolition or is it fire? I personally think it's controlled demolition, but I respect everybody who says, I studied the report and I'm convinced it's fire. Fair enough, okay? Everybody can make up his own mind. 9-11 Unmasked, a very important book by David Ray Griffin, again, uh, one of the most important 9-11 researchers said, um, that the NIST acknowledged, okay, that World Trade Center came down, World Trade Center 7 came down, and they explained that in the beginning said it could not come down from fire. So Sham Sunder actually changed his, he changed his position. Um, he said, of this, when the, the, the draft report was uh, published, he, sa he said that a free fall collapse of a steel frame building could not be produced by fire. And then later he said, yes, it can be produced. I don't know whether he got a call from Bush and said, gee, you got it wrong, it's fire, check again. I don't know. But I don't trust this man, okay? I say very openly, I don't trust this man. 
because he says fire after four years of research. He obviously knows a lot about the building. How can he come to the conclusion that fire can lead to the simultaneous collapse of 81 columns, so you have two second free flow? Did I say that? 81 columns? Two seconds? They need to be gone at the same second. It can't be one goes and the other one waits 10 seconds. No. Otherwise, you don't have the symmetry. Ansgar Schneider, who's here, excellent, uh, clever man, has said, did one column on one end of the house sort of communicate with the other column to say, three, two, one, now we go? Of course not. Columns don't communicate. The New York Times at the time reported that um, column 79 here, they made a nice drawing, that it happened like that. They said, these beams, they extended, and they pushed this girder off the seat here. Okay, that's the initial story for the fire story. And what we now know is, if you have heat there, the arrow shouldn't go in this direction, it should go in the other, okay? Because there's almost no resistance out there. Whereas here, you have the whole building. <laughs> okay, or you should at least go in both directions. And that's the story in, in the New York Times, and it says, uh, fire not explosive felt third tower. And obviously, I've looked at that with different structural engineers. And if you're a structural engineer, look at column 79 and look at this question whether the girder A2001 was pushed off its seat at column 79. Okay, that's really, for, in a nutshell, where the 9-11 debate is today. I think, personally, no, it was not pushed off its seat. It was not. And therefore, fire did not bring the building down. But you can disagree. You can go into the data and find arguments why, in fact, A2001 was pushed off its seat. What I think is very good is this um, girder has a name very easy to remember. It's A, so the first uh, letter in the alphabet, and it's 2001, which happens to be the day, uh, uh, the year of the attacks. So A2001 is a very, very important name to remember for the whole World Trade Center 7 story. Here's the original picture where you can see um, that actually the girder is very strongly fixed with bolts, okay, to the column. And it doesn't just walk off the column. In fact, if that was the case, you know, that, that a girder just walks off a column, then we'd be in serious trouble, maybe even in this building, I don't know. I mean, how many buildings do we enter where we trust that bolts are strong, that girders don't move off columns even if there's a fire? We have a whistleblower. His name is Peter Ketchum. He's here in the middle. He's a very, I think, brave man. You have a lot of brave people in the US. Okay? They're in the peace movement. They don't want these wars. They don't want the lies of the government. And they need our support from Switzerland, from Germany, from every country. And yeah. <laughs> Uh, Pete, Peter Michael Ketchum is a mathematician. He worked at the NIST from 97 to 2011. He didn't work on the, on the World Trade Center 7 report, and he didn't read it for a long time. But at one point, he had his wake-up moment, okay? That's for everybody here in the room in a different year. But once you have your wake-up moment, you have your whole thinking change. I did not contribute to the NIST World Trade Center 7 investigation or reports. Uh, but in August 2016, so for three, three, just three years ago, he had his wake-up moment, I, I began to read some of these reports. I quickly became furious. First, I was furious with myself. How could I have worked at NIST all those years and not have noticed this before? Second, I was furious with NIST. NIST had reached a predetermined conclusion by ignoring, dismissing, and denying the evidence. This was published in Europhysics News in 2016. So basically, we have two people at the NIST. We have Peter Michael Ketchum, he's not very much in television, and we have Sham Sander, okay. My personal opinion, he's a liar, and he's telling you the truth. So you have to make up whom do you want to trust, okay? If somebody says, but the NIST said, then you say, hey, GG, wait, a lot of people working at the NIST. Whom are you listening to? Are you listening to Sham Sander or are you listening to Peter Ketchum? So we're coming to the Halsey report. We're here, number nine. And Halsey says NIST did not tell you the truth. And it's very, very important 
to realize this. Who is Halsey? He is Leroy Halsey. He works in the United States. He works in Alaska. That's that state up there in the north next to Canada. So he's a bit away from Washington. That probably helps. And, and, <laughs> and he's looked at the data. He was given the job to investigate the collapse of World Trade Center 7 by Richard Gage. Okay? Richard Gage has given that presentation before. So you see, and I think we really have to keep that in mind, excellent people in the US doing excellent research. Okay? And Leroy Halsey came to the conclusion, I said this before and I said it again, it's fire did not cause the collapse of World Trade Center 7 on 9-11. Full stop. Fire did not cause the collapse. He doesn't say controlled demolition did it. He doesn't say it. But actually, if there are only two things, fire controlled demolition, and he says fire is not it, then it's controlled demolition. World Trade Center 7 can only fall either due to fire or due to controlled demolition. And you have to make up your mind, okay? And if you know that it was not fire, then it was controlled demolition. So um, uh, if you have an either or situation, you get it right. And the Halsey report took all the original drawings, okay, of the construction of the building. They didn't just make an assumption. They had the original data. The building obviously was gone. They looked at all the data. They looked at the beams, the girder, the columns. They had the official data from the NIST. They looked at the construction, how the beam was seated, connected, bolted, and they found out that when you heat it, it can't move. It can't move away from column 79. And if it can't move away from column 79, then fire cannot destroy the building. So finally, point 10. I was interested to see the reactions in the last seven days to the Halsey report. How does the media react? Was it in the New York Times? Was it on Fox News? No. But I found it on Zero Hedge. Now, I have to tell you, Zero Hedge is not as famous as the New York Times, not as well known as the BBC, and uh, not as much read as the Washington Post. But Zero Hedge said, the results of this study cannot be dismissed. It completely destroys the narrative that has been shoved down the throats of Americans for nearly two decades. That's uh, Zero Hedge, 6 September 2019. So that's five days ago. Global research, the official story of the collapse of World Trade Center 7, Building 7 lies in ruins. That is uh, on September 5, 2019. And so you have Zero Hedge, global research, and, and then I found out that Off Guardian even drew the attention of its readers to this conference that we're having today. It's very funny, right? In the Guardian, in the Off Guardian, they said there's an event, 9-11 Perspectives, in Zurich, okay? And I think, yeah. Because that's a question, how does the media work? And uh, Swiss Propaganda Research, I'm not sure, sure whether you know Swiss Propaganda Research, has put up a map with all the brands of the media. And the map looks like that. You can find it on the internet, the media navigator. And uh, you have brands that are close to power, like Fox News, um, uh, like CNN, like the New York Post. And you have brands that are distant to power. Okay, so that's close to the White House, that's distant from the White House. And Zero Hedge is, of course, very distant from the White House. And if you have something which is very distant from the White House, it's much more likely to be reported in these, in these news outlets. Uh, also, global research, which is here, is obviously a rather distant, and off Guardian is very distant. But people are stuck with The Economist and the Financial Times uh, and uh, BBC News and CNN, and they stay here. And as long as they are here, USA Today, CBS News, ABC News, as long as they are here, they're going to say, that's all nonsense. World Trade Center 7, first of all, didn't exist. If it existed, it didn't fall. If it fell, it fell due to fire. And if it was not fire, I don't care. Okay, so that's the attitude. <laughs> so I have to conclude that really, it, what you read is what you think. And you know Goebbels, who was the propaganda minister for Hitler, he said, it doesn't matter whether it's true or whether it's wrong. We just have to repeat it on all channels all the time. People are going to believe, okay, that, that uh, I don't know, Barcelona is a city in Scandinavia. I mean, if you just repeat it all the time, people are going to believe it. And that's what we call brainwash. 
and it's happening. And so you can download the Media Navigator and check your own brainwash, what you read, what you don't read. It's really interesting. Of course, we also have YouTube. We have university study concludes fire did not bring down building seven. That was published on September 3. And it has only 63,000 views. Okay, so the Halsey report in a five minute video, because people go, gee, I'm not going to read 120 pages. Okay, we make a five minute video. 60,000 people only watch it. But the comments that you find there, I think, are interesting. What do people say? They say, controlled demolition, knew it all along, major milestone for 9 11 truth. Great to see the unbiased, that the unbiased professionals are still on this case after all these years. So there's a lot of people out there, okay, maybe alone in front of their computer. I don't know where they are, but they see things. This isn't rambling French conspiracy theory. It's pure, unalterated science. May justice be done. That's another comment on that, uh, on that study. 18 years now we've had to live knowing that the vast majority of the world believes a lie. It does something to you on the inside. I think that's a very important comment, okay? If you live with a lie for 18 years, it's not healthy, okay? It's not healthy. So get rid of the lie. Yeah, it's not healthy. And I, thi I think in the years ahead, we should say, you know, it's very good if you care for your health, okay? If you have healthy food, if you do a lot of jogging, if you're out in the woods, but also don't have any lies inside of you. It's really bad for your health. It's not just about Bush or Cheney or Osama Bin Laden. It's about yourself. Get to the truth, whatever it is. That's the best you can do for your health. Keep up the great work, guys. We cannot let them get away with this, no matter how much time has passed. Rest in peace to all the victims of 9-11. Now, if you go to, to New York today, and our friends who were there, they have the memorial, right? And the memorial focuses the attention of people on the Twin Towers because there are huge gaps. It doesn't focus you on World Trade Center 7. In fact, if you go to New York today, you'd never think that three towers collapsed because the history, as it's in the memorial, is two. Okay, that's the official history. And a good friend of mine who've, who's seen my talks on World Trade Center 7 has written me, gee, Dan, I've just been to New York. This is crazy. If you're there, it's all full of the Twin Towers, nothing on World Trade Center 7. You know, they should, of course, have the video of World Trade Center 7 on the billboard right there, and it's coming down all the time. That will give a whole different sense to the whole memorial site. I'm not sure what they're going to do it. I'm, I'm going to give the final word to Peter Michael Ketchum, whom I really respect the man. I've never met him, but he's, he's, he's really got my, my, my respect. He says, truth is where our healing lies. I'm totally convinced that this is true, because we're stuck in so many wars. These wars make us just sad. They kill the people in Iraq, one million killed. 200,000 killed in Afghanistan, for what? What's going on? 650 billion for the Pentagon? Is that a good idea for the kids? No, it's not. We're just creating wars and lies, and then we think, do we want to live in a world like that? And my conclusion is no. And I think uh, all of us here in the room are part of the peace movement. So I hope you keep up the good spirit, okay? Because uh, we'll have to work for many, many years, okay? It's not over to with today. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you.